hey, why not make some popcorn and grab a drink? Maybe you'll want to open a can of soda and get to pouring. Okay, I think we're ready now. Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of the TTJ Tech Show coming to you from www.ttjtech.net. It's TV time. All right, folks, once again, thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited to have you today. And uh, if you are, before we get started, uh, watching this video or <laughs> more like listening to it because uh, it's a podcast, so you're seeing some text probably reminding you to check out our website. Please do that. But also, if you are on YouTube at this time, don't forget to uh, leave a like and be sure to subscribe if you've not already done so. Hit the bell so that you'll never miss out on any of what we have to offer. Also, uh, if you have any comments, we love hearing those too. As I said, uh, welcome back. This is the TTJ Tech Show. We have new episodes coming every single Friday from now on. That's the plan, folks. We've also uh, got a playlist of these TTJ Tech Show episodes, uh, our iPad episode from last week, and this one now, and of course, many, many more to come. Two other playlists are already there, but they don't have any videos in them yet. So we got more videos on the way, more playlists on the way. It's just going to be great, okay? Today, welcome to the TTJ Tech Show, where we are going to be reviewing another Apple product. This time, another one of my favorites. Of course, I could say that about all the Apple products, but this time, specifically, the Apple TV 4K released just this past year, 2021. That's the model we're going to be uh, reviewing. So if you didn't already grab that drink and that snack in the beginning, now's a good time for you to maybe want to do so because indeed we're going to get started right away and we want to make sure that uh, you're ready also. All right, guys, so we're going to sort of divide this up into several components. The first thing we're going to do is to give you a very, very brief overview of what exactly the Apple TV is. I apologize if that's redundant for some of you, but just in case you're watching this, listening to this, and you really don't know, uh, we want to share that with you first. We want to then talk about why should I even buy an Apple TV? You know, my I have a smart TV that I just bought, and it has Netflix, and it has Hulu, and it has Amazon Prime. It even has Apple TV Plus. So I'm already getting Apple TV, right? Well, that's going to be the second uh, question. And then in the third section, we're actually going to go ahead and review this Apple TV specifically and uh, its corresponding remote. And we're going to talk about... Uh, why you might want to consider upgrading if you already have the previous generation Apple TV 4K released in 2017. Now, a couple of caveats here as we get started. The first one is I could spend an hour plus uh, talking about how awesome the Apple TV is, how you can cut the cord with it, what all you can do with it, all the features and functionality and everything. And I don't want to do that because I don't want to... Uh, get you to the point where you say, this guy is just too windy and I really don't have any interest in watching any of his stuff anymore. So we don't want to do that. The second thing, uh, you know, so it's going to be very brief. We're going to keep it simple, give you a general overview, and just know that we are going to do more Apple TV videos, um, audio, and maybe some videos coming up, and, uh, you know, more targeted to specific features like how to... Um, 
use the Apple TV overall or how to cut the cord. We have a, a great episode coming up reviewing our favorite live TV streaming service. We'll talk about some of the other ones we have and so forth. We'll mention that today, too. But uh, that's coming. All right. And, and you can always get more information by getting a hold of us, contacting us by phone, email, etc. And uh, remember that we're even going to be offering, well, you may not know, we're going to be even offering a, a class on uh, the Apple TV. So lots of ways to learn more. This is going to be brief today. And in addition to that, I want to say that any information I share regarding streaming services, pricing, and otherwise today are definitely based on U.S. Uh, availability and pricing. Uh, they could change in the U.S. too, but they certainly could be different in other countries. And I'm not even going to attempt to address that because I don't want to give you false, in inaccurate information, okay? So just keep that in mind. It's from the United States perspective. You certainly can use these in other countries, but availability of services, etc., will vary. All right, that's enough of the intros. Let's get started on this thing. So, first of all, what is the Apple TV? Apple TV, to be very, very clear, is not a TV. It is not a television. It is a streaming box that you connect to an existing television by a, an HDMI cable. Now, um, you if you're thinking about streaming boxes, some people are thinking cable box, some people are thinking satellite receiver, some are thinking Roku, whatever. This box is tiny. It is small. It's a little bit thick, but it's kind of neat looking. It's got glossy... Uh, glossy sides and a, a smooth, almost, I guess, shiny top, I guess, what, what I hear, what it feels like. In the um, in the back of it, uh, you've got uh, just a couple of ports. You've got your power port for the, you know, the power cable. And then you have uh, an HDMI 2.1 cable, with uh, a port, rather, excuse me, which we'll talk more about that in the next section of this thing. And also, you've got an Ethernet port if you uh, do want to hardwire, but of course, it's got built-in Wi-Fi. So, very, very simple unit, very small, square box. Uh, it will fit just about anywhere. Uh, you could even mount it to the side of a TV or something in some cases, but very, very small. But you do have to have a TV. This it doesn't replace the television. It adds to it, okay? And what this thing does is absolutely incredible and awesome. All right, so let's start with the fact that it's an Apple device, which means it's going to have access to all of your Apple content, like, for example, any movies or TV shows that you have already purchased or that you may choose to purchase. And of course, you can even purchase right on the Apple TV or rent movies on Apple TV. And um, the stuff you purchase is, you know, stored in iCloud, but doesn't take up your personal space. So you're not worried about storage or just watch it anytime you want, really kind of like streaming it even in, at that point. Uh, and uh, the nice thing, of course, is it's going to, you know, everything that works here will work on your iPad, your iPhone, your iPod Touch, even your Mac. So that's good. The uh, the next thing that it has, uh, of course, is the um, the uh, the various access to, uh, for example, Apple TV Plus, which is a big deal. Uh, that's Apple's streaming TV service. Uh, for those that don't know, it is not um, going to. You're not going to find, you know, uh, the friend, you know, Friends or NCIS or Grey's Anatomy on it because it's all original content. Although they do have the Peanuts um, shows on there, uh, Charlie Brown, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, and The Great Pumpkin, and so forth. Uh, they do have those, uh, but you're not going to find. You know, other uh, content on there. It's all original content otherwise, okay? And some really great original content that is like, you know, award-winning content. Um, A-list actors and actresses, and it's, it's you know, audio descriptions for those who are uh, in need of that, and it's just a really great service. So, um, Apple TV Plus. In addition to Apple TV Plus, there's a whole bunch of what's known as Apple TV channels, of which Apple TV Plus is one. But there's a lot of other ones, and these are premium networks that you can subscribe to without needing to create a separate account or using a separate app or anything like that. You just create it, and it's ready to go as soon as you sign in on all your devices. So any device, any Apple device, um, you know, um, and up to six family members uh, can, can, you know, share these. And uh, you can even download the content uh, in many cases for offline viewing on devices like an iPad, for example. So these channels are things like Paramount Plus, um, uh, Stars, Cinemax, Showtime. Um, you've got some other uh, popular things like Tastemade, PBS Living, Curiosity Stream, History Vault, uh, Lifetime Movie Club, Hallmark Movies Now. Uh, a, it's just a huge variety. I think I, the last count is something like 32, 34, maybe 
35, I don't know the exact number, but somewhere around there of these channels. And so all their content then is, is going to be available to you very quickly and very easily on the Apple TV and on all of your Apple devices. In addition to all of that, then you can install your favorite streaming apps. So you can install and use uh, um, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, Peacock, Discovery Plus, Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, um, and just about any other one you can think of. Some of them free, even, you know, like uh, um, Tubi, Plex, Fubo, not Fubo, uh, excuse me, um, Pluto, I apologize, Fubo's not free, um, Pluto uh, TV, and a whole bunch of others, even YouTube, of course. And so you can install all of these. Some of them you can subscribe to directly um, through your Apple account, even though they're not Apple TV channels. So you do have to have a separate app and a separate account. And these are things like uh, Disney Plus, Discovery Plus, uh, Peacock, those kinds of things. They can be signed up for directly uh, through the uh, iTunes store. But others like, for example, Netflix, uh, you have to have an account already. And if you don't, they'll say, you know, you can use your iPad or whatever to go to the website, but you got to go to Netflix.com and create the account and then come back when you've got a, a username and a password and an active account, you know, and we'll get you going. So just depends on what the uh, the app is there, how that's going to work exactly, but it definitely does work. Now, the next thing uh, that the um, Apple TV is going to uh, offer is support for a lot of the live TV streaming services that are in existence. Now, these include here in the United States things like Direct TV Stream, Hulu with Live TV, or Hulu Plus Live TV. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, YouTube TV. Fubo, that's where Fubo comes in. Um, Sling. Uh, you got um, Vidgo. You've got uh, Philo. Friendly. You've got a whole bunch of live TV streaming services, all with a variety of features and price points and a variety, of course, of channels. I'm not going to get into all of those today because, again, as I said before, you can look forward to a separate episode of the TTJ Tech Show in which we will indeed compare these different services and what they have to offer. But I will, tell, I will go ahead and tell you today, spoiler alert, our family does use Direct TV Stream. We really like it. We've got the ultimate package. So with that, we get like 130-some live TV channels. Plus, we can record to Cloud DVR, which we can record unlimited. So we can just keep recording as much as we want. They also have, I don't know, thousands and thousands of on-demand titles. I forget what number they are saying, uh, but it's a huge number. You can, uh, you can pause and rewind live TV, of course. You can restart programs that are already in progress and you can uh, even do like a 72 hour look back for many things that have aired within the past few days it's just a great great service and uh, definitely all the popular channels that you'd find on a cable or satellite provider you'll find on this direct tv stream service it actually is uh, most of the channels you'd get in the satellite version in many cases but uh, the packages of course things are you know a little bit different but basically it's it's direct tv instead of using uh, satellite dish, it uses the internet connection. So that's what streaming is, right? And so that's how that works. And it's a great, great service. Uh, there are others, as I mentioned. And so that's another thing that is supported on the uh, Apple TV in their TV OS. Now, another aspect of live TV is what's known as TV Everywhere apps. Now, these are apps like Food Network Go, HGTV Go, um, a bunch of the, you know, let's just pick some other random ones, Nick for Nickelodeon or Lifetime, you know, all these different apps that are released by these networks, okay? And when you download and use them or attempt to use them, it'll tell you, you know, if you want to watch this, you have to have a uh, subscription to this channel through, uh, a, you know, a cable or satellite provider. Well, thankfully, streaming providers like DirecTV Stream do indeed count, as a, a, a provider, a, you know, a supported provider. And so you can log into those individual apps. Apple makes that very, very easy. Again, we're not going to get into that right now, um, but it, they do. And so you can actually log into those apps very quickly and very simply and watch even more content. Lots of on-demand, sometimes a live feed as well. And then, you know, lots and lots of bonus content and extra behind-the-scenes footage and all sorts of things in many cases. So lots of ways to watch what you want to watch. Incredible flexibility with it, okay? So that's what Apple TV does for 
the television part of things. But it doesn't just stop there because Apple TV has access to uh, your photos. So you can, you know, view your photos or play slideshows or view your memories with, um, you know, special music, theme music and so forth. And all of your photos and your videos, okay, from your iPhone and iPad. And, and you don't have to even do it from your iPhone and iPad. You do it from the TV because of iCloud. You can listen to all your music. If you have an Apple Music subscription especially, you can listen to you know over 70 million songs and all your playlists and everything. Uh, you can listen to podcasts. Another thing you can do is um, you can work out with Apple Fitness. I'm not a, a, a real fitness buff, but I know that's very important to a lot of people. And they can wear their Apple Watch and they can, with an Apple Fitness Plus subscription, actually... Uh, do these workouts that are led by professional instructors. And then what happens is the watch keeps track and it syncs it with the TV and you can see all these really cool things and you pick your favorite music and they have a lot of neat stuff in there. It really is an amazing service. So that's uh, Apple Fitness Plus. Also access to Apple Arcade. And that is hundreds of games now. At the release date, they had said 100. I think they're close to, if not uh, maybe surpassed 200 now. Uh, and, and I apologize if I'm low on that, because I may be. And so you can play your favorite games. They've got games in tons and tons of genre, and some of them truly are amazing. All of them are really good, actually. I've not seen a one that I would say, oh, no. You know, they're all very well-designed, rich graphics, from what I'm told, really good music and sound effects, and a lot of good gameplay. And some of them are actually popular, well-known games. Others are not. You know, they're unique to Apple Arcade, but others are more familiar or variations on things, you know, sporting games and uh, games like Tetris and stuff, you know, where you might be familiar with the concept. Um, what's cool is that you can use the um, controllers of your choice, too. If you want to really be serious about gaming, um, you can use um, a PS4, PS5 uh, wireless controller, an Xbox uh, One S or One X wireless controller, and uh, you, there also are some exclusively designed ones, uh, like, for example, the SteelSeries Nimbus Plus that is made for Apple devices. And they're also wireless, but the nice thing is they charge with the lightning connector and so forth. So your favorite controller may very well work. And, and uh, when you want to play games on the Apple TV, then that's the way to go. Of course, the Apple TV has Siri, so everything is better with Siri, right? That you're trying to do, you know, you can search with your voice and all of that. And we'll talk about some of those features in the why do I really need to buy an Apple TV uh, section of this video? Um, and then, you know, in addition to all of that, um, of course, there's an app store. And the app store gives you access to thousands upon thousands, I'd say, of more apps. And I've already mentioned some of them. Um, you know, things like Disney Plus, for example, and the other TV apps. But also another whole host of games, even beyond the Apple Arcade games, that have been released. And then you have access to some cooking and recipe apps and some home design apps and educational classes and kids, you know, playtime sort of things and story time. You have these fireplaces that like take over your screen and you get a fireplace or, a, you know, an aquarium, a fish tank or, you know, a snow scene or other things, a beach scene. And you can put music in, in many cases from your library into the, the scene. Plus you got the crackling of the fireplace in many cases. You've got weather apps. You've got clocks. I mean, there we could just go on and on because the list does go on and on. So the App Store even enhances the Apple TV further. But it still isn't, that's still not the end of the story. Because thanks to AirPlay 2 and a feature called uh, screen mirroring, you can actually make it so that anything that's on your iPad or iPhone, or for that matter, your Macintosh, can be displayed on your television screen. And that does include the audio as well. So you can hear it on the, you know, big system that you might have or what have you. And we'll talk about some options there in a little bit. So it, AirPlay, it, screen mirroring is another great feature. This is also not only practical in that respect, but also in the classroom, you know, education or in a conference room, right? You really have a good success with that. Um, speaking of the family and the you know the living room and stuff, I one other point I want to make that I forgot to mention with I talked about music on uh, TVOS and the Apple TV is that it actually has time sync lyrics in most cases in many songs the lyrics will show up 
in time where they're supposed to be. So you can really, you know, have your own family karaoke night, family sing along, uh, whatever. It's, you know, really awesome. So, um, you know, I'm just thinking in my head here about the, um, the built in apps, making sure that I haven't forgotten any crucial, um, information. The only thing I haven't shared with you is the, the, kind of functionality of the TV app itself, but I'm saving that for later, all right? So that's kind of an overview of what the Apple TV does. It really gives you full access to anything you want to watch, better than cable, better than satellite, because you have a lot more flexibility in that you can watch what you want, when you want to watch it. It changes the, uh, the nature of it. And then if you really want that experience of live TV and channel surfing, you know, go into an app like DirecTV Stream if you've subscribed to it and spend some time in there. But then, you know, you can go back and you can go into Disney Plus and you can use Siri and say, you know, hey, uh, show me some good kids movies and maybe it'll bring up Disney Plus. Maybe it'll be stars. Maybe, you know, but it'll have a whole list of movies. You just pick one and start watching, assuming that you're subscribed to the service. And um, again, we'll have a podcast on how to become a cord cutter and we'll cover all that stuff, but it's doable and it's very, very doable. And uh, so that's kind of an overview in our first section here of what is an Apple TV? What can you do with it? We're going to move on now uh, to, to sort of talk about our next thing, which honestly is kind of a continuation of what we've already been talking about and just uh, kind of leading right nicely into that, praise God. So basically, why... If I have a smart TV, you know, or, or a box, because some of these cable box are getting pretty, boxes are getting pretty smart too. Voice remotes, access to Netflix and Pandora and things like that. So, you know, why, why the Apple TV? Well, the Apple TV, first of all, has some unique features. And one of them is the TV app. Now, the TV app is designed to uh, do a lot of things. It gives you access to Apple TV Plus, your other Apple TV channels, all of your purchased content or any content that you might want to purchase, movies and shows, rentals, you rent things, you know, and, uh, you know, a nice universal search, which searches across all of your other apps. But it does so much more than that. And my very favorite thing that it does is, um, is that it uh, actually gives you access, it keeps track of everything you've been watching and makes it available across all of your devices with iCloud, everything that's signed into the same Apple ID. So you got three Apple TVs in the house, you know, one in the living room, one in the bedroom, one in another bedroom, or, you know, multiple, four or five Apple TVs, and then that'll be three. Um, and then you have your iPad, your iPhone. All of these devices will have access to a synced list of what you have been watching so that you can immediately pick up right where you left off. If I were to look in my uh, up next queue right now, I would see things like Everybody Loves Raymond and it would show me what season and episode is next so I could just start watching immediately. And I'd see uh, Aisha's Home Kitchen, I think it's called, or, uh, you know, um, The Pioneer Woman or Love It or List It, Island Life some of these food and home shows that I like, some other sitcoms, Friends and Full House and The Nanny and The King of Queens and, um, oh, just, you know, what else do I watch? Uh, home Improvement. And what happens is they're all on different services. So, for example, Everybody Loves Raymond and The King of Queens are both on Peacock. I actually own the Everybody Loves Raymond series also, but I don't own King of Queens, and I can just watch it on Peacock. I could watch Raymond on Peacock. I could watch Full House on HBO Max. That one I happen to own also. I watch The Nanny on HBO Max. I watch, uh, let's, what did I say? Pioneer Woman is uh, going to be on Discovery+. Plus. And uh, sometimes maybe the episode I want isn't. Maybe the next episode coming up isn't, but it's on DirecTV Stream. So it'll open up in that. So whatever app you need or from your purchased content or one of your Apple TV channels, it automatically knows, and if there's multiple ones, there's even a way to pick which, uh, if there's multiple, you know, services that have the same show, there's, there's a way to pick which one you want to use. But basically, it just knows the app to open and lets you keep watching right where you left off, whether that's in the middle of an episode or, you know, at the, you've just finished an episode and you're ready to start another one. And, of course, this works with movies as well, but I gave you the, uh, the TV show example because... There's more to talk about there when we look at episodic, 
you know, stuff, seasons and all that. And speaking of seasons and episodes, if you are watching a show that is currently airing, and let's say it happens to be the 10th season, and they've only done two episodes so far, so now you've watched episode two, three's not out yet, it's not going to be out till next Wednesday or Thursday, well, as soon as it becomes next Wednesday or Thursday, and that show is ready for you to watch, it is going to, first of all, you're going to get a notification on your, you know, Apple, uh, iPad, iPhone, what have you, but also, that show will be placed right at the head of the line, at the top of the queue, so that you know, you don't have to think to yourself, ooh, it's Thursday, what show do I watch today? No, it's just there. It just shows up at the head of the queue, so you remember to watch it. As soon as you get in there, you see it. And voiceover tells you, if you're a voiceover user. Now, this also has a section called What to Watch, and this is uh, personally curated by actual people at Apple, and and shows that... um, they think you might like trending shows, you know, different categories. And of course, this whole thing gets better and better the more you use it because a lot of it is tailored just for you. They'll have sections like if you like the King of Queens, then we recommend the nanny or we recommend everybody loves Raymond, you know, stuff like that. And they'll also have, um, you know, a couple of those and they'll have a section on um shared with all of you if you have a family because Apple TV supports multiple users so each person can have his or her own profile and their own up next queue and their own progress on games with Apple Arcade and stuff too by the way but you know also relevant to this their their own list of what they've been watching and it influences their own recommendations but not yours but then there's this for all of you section which you know attempts to pick things that are are great for everybody that everybody might enjoy, you know, watching together as a family. Another thing this TV app is really good for is sports because you can pick your favorite sports teams. You can be notified when they are playing. You get real time sports scores and you get notifications if the games get exciting or get really close. And so this is a really, really good feature as well. So the TV app in and of itself is a great reason, in my opinion, to use the Apple TV, but I'm not done. Uh, The next thing is, of course, Siri and Universal Search. Whether you type it or speak it, the ability to search across all those apps is really, really important and really great. So if you want to watch, uh, for example, uh, I was just, uh, you know, we we watched a lot of Christmas movies here in December. um, And, of course, we always love to do that, get the eggnog out or the the hot chocolate, uh, whatever, and, and, you know, watch a Christmas movie as a family. And we love, you know, the Santa Claus and all of those movies and Home Alone and Jingle All the Way and Miracle on 34th Street and just, you know, a whole bunch of these things. So a lot of times they're already going to be featured in the TV app or in some of the other streaming apps that I use, which I don't really have to go into first. I can go into the TV app because they're all integrated or many of them are integrated. Not everyone, but most of them. And so I can probably already see them. But if I don't, I can also say to, you know, Siri, hey, I, I want to look at, I want to watch Miracle on 34th Street. And Siri will find Miracle on 34th Street. And it'll say, well, you know, right now, look, you can, uh, you can watch this in um, uh, Disney Plus. I don't know if that's a Disney Plus. I forget. I think it actually is. But anyway, I'm just giving you examples, right? Uh, they may not be real. Uh, but, you know, you can watch this in Disney Plus or you can watch it uh, on Stars if you're subscribed to that. Or if you really want, you can rent or buy it. So you have all these choices, you know. And so this integration like that is really, really beautiful. Now, I've seen other services try to do that and some of them do OK with it. Most don't come close. I don't think any really come close, but some do better than others. But none really comes close to doing it as well as Apple does. And again, this syncs with all of your devices. If you are an Apple user, an Apple device user, this is a no-brainer to get this device. And that's the next point. You know, the integration with all of your other Apple services and media, photos, music, videos, um, all of this stuff, you know, you can easily access that um, right on your Apple TV, Apple Arcade, as I said, Apple Fitness. If you have a smart TV that happens to have the Apple TV Plus app in it, you're not going to get that deep app integration. You're not going to get Apple Arcade. You're not going to get Apple Fitness Plus. You're not necessarily going to get screen mirroring. Now, some um, smart TVs do have AirPlay to support built into them now, 
And if they do, you might be able to mirror your screen of your iPad and stuff to the TV. But honestly, it's not as good. It's the latency. It's not. It's just that Apple nailed it. They, they do it right. Um, another thing the Apple TV is great at doing is acting as a home hub for you to control your uh, home kit devices. If you have lights, locks, thermostats, uh, you know, cameras, you can view the cameras on there. But it also provides a hub for your HomeKit, Apple HomeKit devices. Uh, and so when you go away on a trip, you can still remotely access your lights, locks, thermostats, etc. And uh, it allows for deep automations. So, you know, you can, uh, you can uh, have the lights turn on at a certain time, the coffee made automatically in the morning, you know, whatever you want to do there. And then, uh, you know, the Apple TV, Apple TV just facilitates that by being a hub, just acting as a hub. And more than one Apple TV is even better because it creates a little, like, mesh network, meaning that these devices talk to each other and extend the range. And really, are, it's just a great thing to do. Another thing uh, going along with that is the Apple TV will notify you when uh, there's, you know, maybe somebody in the view of the camera or when the garage door was open and even when the doorbell rings if you have an appropriate doorbell. So... You know, again, just a great, great option for you. Um, with Apple TV, the picture quality is unbelievable from every assessment that I've ever heard. And one thing I can absolutely confirm for you is that the, the experience is just superior to anything else that you will use. Roku, Amazon Fire, or uh, Google TV, and Android TV, any of that stuff. This just beats it by a mile. Apple knows how to do UI, user experience. They know how to make a good product, but the integration of hardware, software, and services takes that a thousand percent further. They are good at that. And that goes a long, long way, my friends. I understand the Apple TV is more expensive than, you know, this Fire Stick you can pick up or you know, even the, the Chromecast with Google TV or whatever. But I'm telling you, the experience will not be the same. Remember, this is multi-user. You have all of this deep integration. And look, here's the thing. I've used some of these other devices for testing purposes. And I know some people who have used devices. And I, you know, I am, uh, I actually have a couple of, uh, well, three to be exact, uh, direct TV stream devices that we could optionally get with our direct TV stream service that I told you about earlier. And when I do the review of that uh, app and that service, you're going to find out that I don't hate it. Uh, it's not, it's not bad. And I got it in, you know, for places where typically two of them are going to go in our basement, right? Where we have actually more than two TVs and we have an Apple TV down there, but I just thought this is, you know, easy way to supplement on the other TVs, right? So it's not that they're bad, but it's just that the experience isn't the same. You will not find a better experience than on Apple TV, okay? It truly is the best. And these other reasons, you know, deep integration, TV app, uh, Apple Arcade, screen mirroring, Apple Fitness Plus, access to all of your other Apple content, iCloud integration, uh, and, uh, you know, the um, even, even the use of the... Um, um, the, you know, Siri and, and, and Universal Search, all of these things really do add up to um, the answer of yes, the Apple TV is the way to go. All right, so the final, the very final thing we're going to do here in this uh, section now is um, this section three, we're going to do a quick review of the Apple TV. And if I already have an Apple TV, especially an Apple TV 4K, uh, why should I buy or should I buy this new one? Should I upgrade? Um, now, the, the changes in the Apple TV 4K uh, from the previous Apple TV 4K, <laughs> they were both Apple TV 4K, but we'll call this the second generation, okay? That's what Apple calls it, I believe. And uh, the changes were, were modest. There weren't a ton of them. Um, they both can run tvOS, even the Apple TV HD, which is, uh, you know, uh, just the non-4K model, it can run tvOS, uh, the latest version. So we're still able to run what is it, 15.2 uh, point, I think it's about to be probably 15.3 here uh, in a few days. Technically, I'm already on it as a beta tester, but 
I understand, uh, you know, that we, we know that's, you know, logical. Um, so, you know, that's not changed. You're not going to see a drastic difference when you set this up, nor will you see a drastic physical difference or any real physical difference in the Apple TV. But under the hood, the specs have been improved and in big ways. Okay, so the first thing is we have jumped up now to the A12 Bionic processor from the A10 uh, X chip. And that's a big deal. That's two generations. A12 Bionic is the exact same processor that is included in the iPad 8th generation, which we talked so highly about last week. I don't know that you get the neural engine with the A12 Bionic on tvOS, but you do get the A12 processor, that same chip, really, really powerful six-core processor. And you also have upgrades in just about every other specification. So HDMI has been upgraded to HDMI 2.1 instead of 2.0. You have um, high support for high frame rate, uh, up to 120 hertz. And so, for example, the iPhone 12 and 13 are capable of shooting these really high frame rate HDR videos. You can watch them on the Apple TV true to form, assuming your TV can also handle it. Um, you have uh, support for thread technology, which is a new standard that really improves things for Wi-Fi. Um, new Bluetooth standard, Wi-Fi 6. Again, we're just imp just improving specs. If you don't know what all this means, it just means faster uh, streaming, better performance, smoother performance, better picture quality. Um, and we even have, um, you know, updates in the audio, what it can support. And then you're also going to find that the um, the HDMI 2.1 that I mentioned a few minutes ago will will enhance things in other ways that I'm going to tell you about in a second. But basically, it's just been spec bumps all the way. And so right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I think that's important. Okay, but we'll come back to answering the question in a little bit of should I upgrade? Probably the biggest change that you'll notice with this Apple TV and the one that that garnered the most excitement and attention is that the remote has been redesigned. What's known as the Siri remote here in the United States has been completely redesigned. It's an all metal. I'm picking it up as I speak, rub, rolling it around in my hand because it feels so good. It's a solid aluminum remote. It has uh, very few buttons, but then so did the previous version. The buttons on this one, um, though, they have the back button, which is also kind of like your menu button, but it's called back now. And uh, to the right of it, you have this TV button, which also can be a home button. Again, this is really going to do that in more detail in a separate uh, episode, right? Okay, you got your play pause. You got your volume, so you can control volume of the TV or of your sound bar or whatever. And new for this version, they've added a mute button. Not a big deal to me because I'd rather pause than mute whenever that's available. Uh, so I'm not missing anything, but in cases maybe where you can't or something. And then uh, the Siri button has now been moved to the right side of the remote. You can press it with your index finger. And there's been added a power button to power on and off your, your components. The other thing the uh, Apple TV Siri remote has now is a click wheel that also works as a trackpad. So in the previous version, it was just a touch surface trackpad, but now it's that plus a click wheel. It has the directional left, right, up, down, and then the center kind of select button. And you can click the, the pad in any of those places to move, but you can also swipe. And so it's really cool on things like the keyboard when you're entering letters, characters, and stuff. Because let's say you want to go from A all the way to M, well, you can swipe a really big swipe. Oh, that moved me to J. Now let me just click three times with the right K L M, and there I am. And then click the center button. So it, it is really cool because you get the boast best. <laughs> you get the best of both worlds. Didn't know that was going to be so hard to say. Sorry, folks. You get the best of both worlds, and um, you know th this this offers a tremendous amount of precision when you need it, but also a great deal of flexibility and range when you need it. And you can kind of run your finger in a circle around it to advance your position in a movie or TV show in supported apps. And so it's a really, really nice thing. 
the remote is wireless over Bluetooth and also contains an IR sensor so it can operate your television and stuff. Uh, although most times that's not needed now because of the modern technology that's in the Apple TV and in the TV. They're usually smart enough that you wouldn't have to even worry about that. Um, the uh, same thing with sound bars too in a lot of cases. Um, the remote is charged with a lightning uh, cable. It's got a lightning connector at the bottom. And so it's a really nice remote. And I think that the overwhelming uh, response to this remote is, yes, thank you so much, Apple. It, it, it was a great upgrade and a welcome change for a lot of people. I was not bothered by the previous remote. I never complained about it. I rather enjoyed it at the time. But now I do like this one better. It's, it's got a, a thicker feel to it, so heftier. Uh, and it, it uh, definitely, I love that click pad combination, click pad, track pad, whatever you want to call it. Um, the remote was, they made an interesting choice. It was, it's very, very targeted, right? Apple says that it's their experience that people who buy this want to watch TV. And if they want a game, they'll use a gaming controller. They're not going to use their uh, Siri remote to play serious games. And so for that reason, this remote does not have like an accelerometer, gyroscope, those kinds of things. Uh, but you can play some games with it, you know, if you're playing word games or, you know, puzzles and stuff that don't require physical movement. But the, the really the thing you want to do if you're going to be a serious gamer is you're going to buy a game controller or use a game controller from another one of your consoles, assuming you already have one. But this remote is really something that everybody loves. The remote can be purchased separately for $59 and even comes with the Apple TV HD now if purchased from Apple. So that begs the question for a lot of people. Well, if I've got an Apple TV 4K from 2017, and maybe I didn't even buy it in 2017, maybe I bought it much more recently. So to me, it's really new because maybe I only bought it in 2020. It's still under warranty for crying out loud. Um, you know... Um, why don't I just buy a $59 remote and keep the Apple TV? Well, the answer is you certainly could. And as a matter of fact, that's what we did in our master bedroom. We did indeed do just that. We bought the remote and kept the Apple TV. Not a problem. Nothing wrong with that. But here's why I think it's worth at least considering buying one of these new 2021 jobs is because... The technology upgrades that are inside of this are not a small thing. When I always like to, you know, Steve Jobs, former CEO of Apple, had a saying, and it wasn't even his, and he never claimed that it was. He always attributed it to its rightful, you know, it was Wayne Gretzky who said, I skate, I may misquote this, I apologize, I'm paraphrasing, but he, I skate where the puck is going to be, not where it's been. And Steve Jobs always, you know, really, really felt strongly about that. That's how Apple operates. It's in Apple's DNA. And that's what I like to do, both personally for my family and as a tech guy. I feel it's almost necessary for me to do that. It's an obligatory kind of thing as much as it is me wanting to have the latest gadget. So because of that, what I can tell you is that there's so much that is going to future-proof this new Apple TV. Now, sure, you could wait until it's necessary. You could wait till they say, well, you know, tvOS, uh, whatever it might be, 18 or whatever at that point, you know, won't work on this. You got to get the newer one or this feature, that feature. Won't. You could wait, you know, let the, the uh, so-called, I wouldn't call it necessity, but let the need for it sort of dictate when you buy it. That's fine. Personal preference. But I like it, and I wanted to get it right away. And I'm glad I did because of a little sort of almost hidden feature that Apple didn't announce that I'm going to tell you about. So it, this, this new, pro, this upgraded processor is a big deal. HDMI 2.1 is a big deal. Thread is a big deal. Wi-Fi 6 is Bluetooth. They are a big deal in the way that they've been upgraded. And HDMI 2.1 is really a big deal if you intend to watch this high frame rate HDR content. Another thing you can do with these Apple TVs is they uh, introduced with this the color calibration so you can have a color balance uh, to help the, to get the best picture out of your TV. Now, you can do that on the older model as well. All right, so I recommend it. You know, I, I can't say everybody's got to rush out and buy it right away, but I'm certainly not going to say don't buy it if you have the preview. I think, you know... Give it some thought. See what you think. Uh, I want to tell you about 
one of these features too that's super cool. One of the neatest things that you can do with your Apple TV is to use your HomePod or HomePod mini speakers as speakers for the television. You've always been able to sort of do this kind of on a case by case basis through AirPlay. Like when I'm watching a movie, if I were going to go out in the kitchen to get a snack, I could put the movie onto my the audio of the movie onto my kitchen home pod with a couple quick setting tweaks just on the fly. But you never had it where the home pods actually replaced your TV speakers for complete audio experience until more recently. And it is one of my favorite features. And we are going to do a separate podcast about HomePod Mini. Um, we'll do a HomePod Mini review in a separate episode. But again, spoiler alert, it's great. I love it. I love the HomePods. And actually, in our living room, we have two of the original HomePods, as I like to call them, the big brothers, right? The ones that are larger and full-size HomePods, you know? And so we've got one on either side of the room, and we can create a, uh, a virtual, you know, like, 5.1 surround sound at the very least a stereo sound we're listening to music and stuff but when you're watching tv it really does give you this like experience as if you had 5.1 i mean you hear the sound going from one side to the other people flying a plane whatever they're walking around talking on difference it is so cool and there's nothing like it i've never heard any home theater system sound as good as these home pods sound so you don't need the Apple TV 4K second generation to do that. You can do it with the first generation Apple TV 4K. But let me tell you what you do need the second generation to be able to do. And it's something Apple didn't even announce at their um, media event where they introduced this thing. But people figured it out pretty quick and boy did I want it. I always felt it was a bit weird to be listening to all this stuff on the awesome HomePods when we're watching Apple TV, which is really the primary device that we use, uh, second to none. But then my son or my daughter would want to play their Xbox, and we'd switch to the Xbox input, and all of a sudden this really, really high graphics game, which looked great on our beautiful LG TV, did not sound anywhere close to as good as what we had just been listening to, because, of course, Xbox doesn't use HomePods. Or does it? With HDMI 2.1 only available on the latest Apple TV, there is support for a feature called ARC, or Audio Return Channel. When you enable this feature, what it does is it puts every sound, all audio, that is output to the television, whether it's Xbox, PS5 we got now, we got a Nintendo Switch, or if we um, used our direct TV stream box, although why? Because Apple TV is so good. But, you know, if you did or some other box, that audio is going to be passed through the Apple TV and therefore it's going to play through your home pods. So no matter what we are listening to now, it sounds great because it all comes through the home pods. All right, my friends, the Apple TV can be purchased in two configurations where the 4K second gen is concerned, 32 gigabytes and 64 gigabytes, 32 for $179 and 64 for $199. Here again, personal preference, whatever your finances allow, but I say to double the storage for 20 bucks. Come on. All right, guys, uh, please. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it's been meaningful to you. Apple TV is great. If you didn't get that already from this and uh, you know what, that's going to do it for us today. But remember, we got new episodes coming every Friday. So come back. God bless you. Thanks for joining. And remember, like, subscribe and comment.